Here's a pond in a rural area near Albany, New York, USA. I visited it on 10 September 2016 to get a sense of what sorts of invertebrates live around this habitat. I made a separate video about invertebrates in the water itself, so this video focuses on invertebrates that were on the shore or that were only just in the water. Here's a bug that sadly seemed to have gotten trapped in the pond and perhaps drowned. Here the camera is pointed at algae-filled water just at the shore of the pond. You can see a few copepods and perhaps other creatures swimming by. Here's a red aphid that's not on its host plant. I made a separate video about the numerosity of these aphids on a kind of plant that grew abundantly next to the pond. Here's a tiny spider that crawled onto my laptop screen. I think these are water striders. According to Wikipedia, quote, consistent with the classification of the Geridae as true bugs, i.e. suborder Heteroptera, Gerids have mouth parts evolved for piercing and sucking and distinguish themselves by having the unique ability to walk on water. Geridae, or water striders, are anatomically built to transfer their weight to be able to run on top of the water's surface. As a result, one could likely find water striders present in any pond, river, or lake. Gerids are aquatic predators and feed on invertebrates, mainly spiders and insects, that fall onto the water surface. Water striders are attracted to this food source by ripples produced by the struggling prey. The water strider uses its front legs as sensors for the vibrations produced by the ripples in the water." End quote. This may be an inchworm, though I'm not certain. According to this page, quote, inchworms lack appendages in the middle portion of their body, causing them to have a characteristic looping gait. They have three pairs of true legs at the front end, like other caterpillars but only two or three pairs of prolegs, larval abdominal appendages, located at the rear end. An inchworm moves by drawing its hind end forward while holding on with the front legs, then advancing its front section while holding on with the prolegs." This page adds, quote, Not all inchworms eat the same foods. Mostly they eat leaves and fruit. End quote. Here's a snail on a rock in the pond. And here are more snails on the shore. This article reviews learning in Limnia stagnalis, a type of pond snail. I don't think any of the snails in my video are Limnia stagnalis, but presumably similar things are true of the snails in my video. Quote, in the most thoroughly investigated classical conditioning paradigm used in Limnia, a tactile conditioning stimulus to the lips is paired with the unconditioned stimulus, sucrose. These experiments demonstrated that Limnia can be classically conditioned by repeatedly pairing touch to the lip with food, 5 to 15 trials, and that appetite of learning in Limnia shares important characteristics with associative conditioning in vertebrates, such as stimulus generalization and discriminative learning, classical operant interactions, and strong dependence on both external and internal background variables." End quote. According to Wikipedia, quote, Limnia stagnalis perform more inseminations in larger groups and prefer to inseminate novel over familiar partners. Such higher motivation to copulate when a new partner is encountered is known as the Coolidge effect." End quote. The rest of this video shows further invertebrates from near the pond.